Tonight. Alongside Mark May, Mac Brown, Robert Smith, I'm Adnan Burke. We're counting down the rest of the major bowl games, including the Buffalo Wild Wings Citrus Bowl. The Michigan Wolverines, first year under Jim Harbaugh, 9-3, third in the Big Ten East, fifth bowl appearance in the last six seasons, taking on Coach McIlwain's Florida Gators, SEC East champion, and 24th bowl appearance in the last 25 seasons, 1 o'clock Eastern on ABC. I'm going with the coach here first because this is a coach's matchup. you got Harbaugh and McIlwain. Two great quotes. I can't wait to hear Mackle <laughs> talk about <laughs> dead fish leading up to this game. Whatever other gems and birds with machine us. guns. <laughs> well, this will be good with both of them. These two guys probably did the best job in the Power Five of coaching in the first year. Struggling on offense last year at Florida, Will Muschamp obviously left very good football players. Still got to get the quarterback situation worked out, and they had an awful situation losing their quarterback earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought. Coach Harbaugh took a quarterback from Iowa that he didn't even know and really made the running game such that they played defense, they ran the ball, then they got the play-action passing going, and he made Rudock uh, really be a factor and, and be a factor in this league, had a chance and should have really beaten Michigan State. So these two guys, this would be a good game. May, there may not be any points scored. They may be on special teams and, and defense, but these will be two really well-coached teams. And as I said, they're going to be excited about playing each other. And what about the transformation of Jake Rudock from the Utah game until what we saw later in Lots the year? Really I amazing. mean, the overthrows, the interceptions, yeah. the decision-making was poor then. And to your point, Coach, I really think that they did a great job as a staff putting Rudock in the types of situations, using the type of plays where he can gain some comfort, especially just dumping that ball off to a great tight end and Jake Butt. And defensively, stout for most of the year, had some injuries along that defensive line that changed things towards the end of the year. Of course, Florida, like you said, it just the offense is just terrible. The kicking game is terrible. Might be an ugly game, but it'll be fun to watch. Yeah, not, DJ, not, DJ Durkin is leaving, but they right. let him go. And Greg Madison's there, who's He's one of the, the best defensive co coordinators in the country. So... Michigan's not going to drop off right. on defense. Mayday, not to lay it all on Treon Harris, but if McElwain wants to win, we need some turnovers, we need some special teams mm -hmm. plays because that offense really did struggle. It is. Both offenses did. And you like the baby steps that they've taken at Michigan, their quarterback position. But I think it's interesting that both of these coaches are offensive-minded coaches. <laughs> and their defense led them this year. And the defense got them the bowl games this year. And I just think that when you look back, I think Mus Will Muschamp did a terrific job of stocking the defense for Florida because that's what really saved them this year. Because watching that offense against Alabama, it was almost embarrassing. They had the one big play for 46 yards for a touchdown and a, and a special teams return. But besides that, they could not move the ball, period. Well, they Florida, need to recruit Florida offensive State line and quarterbacks. Two points from their yeah. defense, just the yeah. safety in that game. Yeah. It was terrible well, all year. And being great offensive coaches, they looked at their offense and they said, ain't going to work, brother. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to win on defense and special teams. Well, that's it, that's and, it. and I'm sure you've seen this, you've seen this a number of times, Coach. It doesn't matter who you have at the skill positions if you don't have a line that can block. It doesn't matter what system you run. It doesn't matter how talented those guys are because they can't do anything. And the offensive line at Florida is just not there yet. You mentioned the fact that both these coaches had very quick turnarounds. Which team do you think is positioned to have a stronger run over the next three to five years? I, I think Michigan because they look better on both sides of the ball to me. Yeah. And, and Florida's got to get their quarterback situation worked out. It's not just an overnight thing at that position. You just can't whiff one up with a magic wand. I've been there, done that. If only we could I've you. tried it. It, it didn't work, may I say. That's why I'm sitting here today. But um, I, I do feel like that dependent on Michigan's young quarterbacks and, and where they can come, and, and Jim's just got so much great publicity coming in. I, I well, mean, he, about it, he won your, the Twitter world oh, and, oh, yeah, and, yeah. and the camps all over the country yeah. and kids running out to see him and people are buying khakis. and, and, and <laughs> that, that went, That's what it went too far. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but very honestly, he, he got a cool place to come as recruits immediately. And that's a, that's a tough thing to do when you're new, and especially when you got the power of uh, Michigan State and, and Ohio State in the same league. I remember thinking, man, a start of the year, if he can get seven wins in his first season, that'd be a success. Nine wins, that, that's a home run for him. I think he overexceeded the expectations by everybody. I think if they thought that they could just get to a bowl game with this team and they could come in and recruit guys, they could get better and build a foundation. But I think the bottom line is he's done a terrific job. And you're right, he's won the social media war. Mm. I think that's king right now. But he also has the big house, the facilities, and the name brand of Michigan, which doesn't right. hurt at all. So I think he's going to be a lot more successful than people think. I think next year they're going to have double digits. 
double-digit victories during the regular season. And, and I, wasn't, I wasn't surprised, quite frankly, to see this out of Jim Harbaugh, just because of what we've seen from him in the past. Mm. And what he gets out of guys, the same way he won at Stanford, he said it best one time, we want to win with character and cruelty. That's exactly <laughs> what you saw from this team. And it's a different mindset. You maximize your talent when you play with that level of intensity. The other advantage he has, and I've heard Desmond Howard talk about this. He's crazy. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going there. I have heard Desmond talk about this. But he has a tremendous advantage in recruiting that he has been an NFL coach and he's been right. successful. And he can tell Robert Smith, come with me. I know how to get you there. Right. I'm going to run an offense that's going to get you there. I know the coaches. I know the general managers. I know the owners, man. You, you come to Michigan now, and this thing's going to work for you. That is such a great point, Coach. And how much have we heard here recently about how college is ruining quarterbacks for the NFL and the systems in college yep. do not translate. You get a guy in there, you, you get a quarterback in there, as you just talked about, mm -hmm. you get some quarterbacks in there, you're halfway home. You know he's going to get a quarterback because you know how he's going to recruit? He's going to say two names. First name, Andrew. Last name, Luck. <laughs> <laughs>